Hi, I'm Eric Kai, the chemical statistician. And today, I'm going to show you how to draw the Lewis dot structure for boron trifluoride. In three earlier videos, I drew the Lewis structures for carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and the carbonate ion. So if you haven't watched those videos yet, I encourage you to do that first. This new example involving boron trifluoride is special because it involves an incomplete octet. And I will talk more about what that means as we conclude the video. But first, as always, we need to start by counting the number of valence electrons in the constituent atoms. We know that boron has three valence electrons and that fluorine has seven valence electrons. There are three fluorines, so that gives us 21 from the three fluorines. In total, then, we have 24 valence electrons. Next, we need to think about the geometry. And as usual, I encourage you to think about the electronegativities. Fluorine is more electronegative than boron which we know from the trends in the periodic table. So I encourage you to put the less electronegative atom in the center and the more electronegative atoms in the periphery. We're now ready to distribute the electrons into this molecule. I encourage you to start as usual by filling the electrons in the bonds. And a good way to start is by assuming that the bonds are all single bonds. That's not always true, but it's a good starting point. This takes away six electrons from the 24. So we have 18 left. A good idea at this point is to assume that those remaining 18 are distributed to the atoms on the periphery, to the three fluorine atoms on the periphery. 18 divided by three is six, so we can put six electrons in each of the fluorines. Now, we have distributed all 24 of those electrons, but boron does not have eight electrons around it. It has only six. You may think that this is a problem, but actually it's not. This is an exception to the octet rule. The octet rule says that for atoms with atomic numbers, 20 or below, they usually follow the octet rule, which means that they require eight electrons around them to be stable. Those eight electrons could be lone pair electrons or electrons in bonds. However, there are some exceptions to that rule, and here is a classic example. Boron, in this case, is stable with six electrons around it, not eight. Other exceptions involve aluminum, lithium, and hydrogen. This is a particularly notable and common example that you will see in chemistry classes that talk about exceptions to the octet rule. And this is an example of an incomplete octet. It is important to note that boron does not always violate the octet rule. And I will
will illustrate that in another video through another example. In the meantime, I encourage you to visit my blog, The Chemical Statistician, to learn more about statistics, chemistry, machine learning, or math, or to get some career advice for your professional development. You can also visit me on Twitter at ChemStatEric. Visit my YouTube channel to watch more video tutorials on statistics or chemistry. And check out my new talk show, The Central Equilibrium, in which I interview guests who teach me technical topics in math, science, or economics. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope that you learned something useful today.